The Abbott and Costello program. Listen to the great rhythms of Will Osborne and his orchestra. The swingy singing of Connie Hayes. And that dumpy, dumpling head little diplomat who, when he heard that Mussolini and Hitler were dead, had this to say. Let's all take a ride with Connie Haynes on a trolley car. With my high starch collar and my high top shoes and my hair piled high up on my head, I went to lose a jolly hour upon the trolley and lost my heart instead. With his light brown derby and his bright green tie, he was quite the handsomest of men. Ding, ding, ding went the bell. Zing, zing, zing went my heart string. For the moment I saw him, I fell. Chug, chug, chug went the motor. Bump, bump, bump went the brake. Thump, thump, thump went my heart string. When he smiled, I could feel the car shake. He tipped his hat and took a seat. He said he hoped he hadn't stepped upon my feet. He asked my name, I held my breath. I couldn't speak because he scared me half to death. Buzz, buzz, buzz went the buzzer. Flop, flop, flop went the wheel. Stop, stop, stop went my heart string. As he started to leave, I took hold of his sleeve with my hand. And as if it were planned, he stayed on with me. And it was grand just to stand with his hand holding my Costello. <laughs> Costello. It's about time you got here. Costello, you're getting dumber every day. I think you could tell everything you know in five minutes. I could tell everything the both of us know, and it wouldn't take any longer. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Never mind that, Costello. You've been acting very peculiar since we started our picture at the MGM. This is going to kill a lot of people. Yes, I'm afraid you're getting very conceited. I am not conceited. I'm the same talented, lovable, high-class big shot I've always been. <laughs> I was right, you are stuck up. Why, yesterday, you even autographed one of your own pictures, and to yourself. Well, I had to do it, Abbott. I always wanted a picture of me. Uh, what did you write on that picture? With love, from one handsome guy to another. <laughs> Costello, you are a swell-headed, pompous egomaniac. Abbott, I wish you'd tell me tell that to my scoutmaster. Why? He thinks I'm a jerk. Oh. <laughs> Costello, you are becoming impossible. Everybody at the studio is talking about you. Yeah, but they're all saying nice things. Yeah, I wonder. Sylvan Simon, Martin Gosh, yeah, Al Lickman, they're I all know. speaking so nice yes. of me. Just yesterday, Margaret O'Brien paid me a compliment. Margaret O'Brien is mm -hmm. just a little child, and I heard what she said to you. You did? Yes, Margaret O'Brien said you had a face that only a mother could love. Yeah, but did you ever see her mother? Woo! <laughs> Costello. Banana! <laughs> Come here, Costello. You know, the way you've been chasing the girls at the studio set is disgraceful. Those actresses don't want to be bothered with you. You're not the romantic type. Oh, is that so? Well, Judy Garland, she thinks I'm a great romantic lover. She said I reminded her of Rooney. Judy Garland said you reminded her of Rooney? Well, she didn't use them words, but she said every time I kissed her, it was like getting a Mickey. Uh -uh. <laughs> Listen, Costello, you're a comedian. You'll never be a lover in pictures with your face. Now, what's wrong with my face? I'm getting prettier every day. I'm, I'm getting so pretty that I'm even making my own mother jealous. Oh, Costello, how could you make your mother jealous? She looks at me and gets jealous at the other mothers. 
Augusta. No, nobody is jealous of you. Why, even your new girl, Mabel uh, Mustard Plaster, doesn't give a hoot about you. Is that so? Yes. Well, it so happens, Abbott, that Mabel Mustard Plaster is stuck on me. Last night, her... <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> it so happens... That last night, her and me sat in front of the fireplace and watched the coals turn red. Mm, do you know what made those co coals turn red? Nothing that we was doing. I know, look, look. <laughs> Tell me, Costello, when you first met Mabel, were you infatuated? No, but she was about half plastered. <laughs> Costello, you don't understand. I mean, when you started to woo Mabel, were you uh, smitten? Oh, certainly I was smitten. We were both smitten. You don't think I woo standing up, do you? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> oh, you idiot. I, I didn't... was smitten right by the fireplace. I didn't listen. I didn't... Please, I didn't say sitting, I said smitten. When you held hands with Mabel the first time, were you uh, smitten? No, sir. You weren't smitten? No, when I hold hands with a girl, I don't wear no smitten. No, look, look. <laughs> look, Costello, I'm, I'm only trying to find out how you feel about Mabel Mustard Plaster. Now, if you were smitten with a girl, you might hanker for her. Did you ever hanker for her? I even hankered with her. Oh, no, no, you, you sap. How could you hanker for a girl? Well, it happened last Sunday, Abbott. Mabel and I got in a rowboat and rowed way out to the end of the point. Yes. And we hankered there all day. <laughs> Boy, did we have fun. I wasn't even wearing my smittens. It wasn't cold. No, no, no. <laughs> no, Costello, you're confusing the issue. You're talking about anchoring a boat, and I'm talking about hankering for a girl. Now, hankering is like yearning. Tell me, are you yearning for Mabel? No, sir. I'm yearning for myself and my father. You yearn for yourself and your father? Yeah, I make $20 a week, and my father takes half of what I yearn. No. <laughs> Costello, when I say yearn, I don't mean earn like in earning. I mean yearn like in yearning. And to yearn, you must be smitten. If you are smitten, that constitutes infatuation. Oh, when you say yearn, you don't mean earn like in earning. You mean yearn like in yearning. And to yearn, you must be smitten. If you are smitten, that constitutes infatuation. Now you've got it. Now, I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Costello, forget about being a dramatic actor. You'll never be a success as a ladies' man. Oh, no? Well, for your information, Mr. Rabbit, there's a dozen women in Hollywood tearing their hair out just to have a date with me. Well, why don't you go out with them? Who wants to go out with bald-headed women? Oh, get me out of here. <laughs> Folks, last week at rehearsal, a young fellow walked in the studio and started singing. And nobody stopped him. Up until a short time ago, he was an aerial gunner in a B-17. And nobody stopped him there either. And after you folks hear him tonight, I don't think you'll ever want him to stop. Ex-aerial gunner Bob Matthews with Will Osborne and the orchestra sing I Should Care. I should care I should go around weeping I should care I should go Without sleeping, strangely enough, I sleep well. But for a dream or two, and I count my sheep well. Honey, how she. Can lull you to sleep a while I should care I should let it upset me I should care But it just doesn't get me Maybe I won't find someone as lovely as you.
I've made up my mind. What do you mean? I ain't gonna act. No, and no more comedy pictures. No more. I'm too pretty to be hanging off the back of fire wagons, getting basketballs bounced off of my head and having oysters squirting milk in my puss. Oh, calm no down. No more. Calm down, Come on, Costello. Right, Simon, Simon, that's Never mind. It. Listen, no more of that. Now, look, you're a comedian. You can't be a dramatic actor. That takes training and background. Oh, I got that, Abbott. My whole family was high-class actors. My Aunt Minnie was a fan dancer. A fan dancer? Yeah, and one time when Aunt Minnie was doing a fan dance, a mouse ran across the stage and my Aunt Minnie dropped her fans. And what happened? The mouse fainted. Uh, uh... <laughs> Did they get rid of the mouse? Huh? Did they get rid of the mouse? No, he had a ticket. They couldn't put him out. Now, look, uh... <laughs> Gosh, Stella, please, you don't understand. I'm talking about dramatic background like I've got. Why, when I was 12 years old, I was with the Abbey Players of Ireland. That's nothing. When I was 12 years old, I was with the Hooky Players of Patterson. <laughs> Come in. I beg your pardon, which one of you is Lou Costello, the great actor? That's me. Mr. Costello, please face my camera and give me a big smile. Ah, uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank, uh, you. thank you, Mr. Costello. And uh, don't forget to look in the paper tomorrow morning. Will my picture be in? No, but Dick Tracy's in a terrible mess. <laughs> I'll bet that guy is Measles' brother, chicken pox. Hello, yes, this is Bud Abbott. Okay, I'll tell Costello. Hey, that was Universal Studios. They said they are sorry they won't be able to complete our latest picture, the naughty 90s, until they are able to secure a dramatic actress to play the final scene. They said that Betty Davis, Catherine Hepburn, Joan Fontaine, and all the other dramatic actresses are busy and our picture will have to wait. Uh, did they realize that this is a half-hour program? <laughs> Why, what's wrong? They said all that just now? Yes. We must be running overtime, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that. Costello, this is your big chance to prove your acting ability. I'm going to get you some women's clothes. Take you to the studio, and we'll see if you're good enough to fool the director into letting you do the final scene. But they'll recognize me. They know all the dramatic actresses. Yes, but they don't know all the South American dramatic actresses. Oh, I get it. You want me to be another Carmen Miranda? That's Carmen Miranda. <laughs> With my shape, it's Miranda. <laughs> Some people even think I'm a stoop. All right, look. Come on, Costello. I'll take you to Professor Mellonhead School of Spanish Acting and have him coach you for the part. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the School of Spanish Acting, gentlemen. I am Senor Melonhead. <laughs> Senor Melonhead. I've seen your Melonhead around here for ten weeks and it's starting to get right. Now, Costello, <laughs> I'm surprised at you. Senor Melonhead is a great artist. And why don't he have... Uh, where am I mixed up? Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. He said I, I was... I got a... it. I got it. I got it. Thank you. <laughs> then why don't he paint... Never mind. On with the next line. <laughs> What's the matter with my head? Oh, your scalp runs all the way down to your heel. Is that so? Oh, Young boy. man, I'll have you know, Costello, before I married my wife, I had hair as black as the ace of spades. Looks like your wife trumped your ace. <laughs> Melon Head, was your whole family bald? No, not exactly. Of course, for many years, my mother did have a rat in her hair. That's no way to talk about your father. Ed. <laughs> Costello, be quiet. Senior Melon Head. Costello wants to play the part of a pretty Spanish girl. Now, can you coach him? Can I coach him? Gentlemen, I am the greatest authority on Spanish customs. Why, I've even been a bullfighter. In my native Spain, I used to enter the arena like a matador. I faced the bull like a picador, and I fought the bull like a toreador. And they carried you out like a cuspador. <laughs> Shut up, Costello. Mr. Melonhead, yes? could you start Costello's lessons right Why, now? Why, of course, I'll start his lessons immediately. Here, on this piece of paper is a simple Spanish phrase. Read it, please. Okay. Muchas gracias, uh, no, amigo. No, 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 not gracious. That word is gracias. You see, in Spanish, the C is pronounced T-H. Oh. Gracias. You see? T-H. <coughs> you see? Would you mind putting your head some... Get over there! <laughs> In Spanish, the T-H... In Spanish, it's pronounced T-H, huh? That's right. It's a good thing we don't have that in English. Why? Can you imagine Bing Crosby and Gary Thooper taking Claudette Colbert in a restaurant and ordering three cups of toffee and three pieces of coconut custard pie? <laughs> That's right! Get out of here! Oh, come on. Who talk... writes this? I don't know. Look, look let's talk sense. <laughs> Let's talk sense, Costello. Come on. Let's get on with the lessons. Very well, Mr. Abbott. Now, Costello, we'll say that you, you are a lovely Spanish senorita. You meet a gay caballero at your fiesta. 
Now, when he sees you, he playfully clicks his castanet, and then he bangs his maracas together. He does? Yes. <laughs> and do you know what you do? Yeah, I hit him over the head with my fiesta. Yeah, no. <laughs> you do nothing of the sort. You invite him. Look, you invite him into your home, and you cook him a delicious Spanish meal in your patio. Can you remember that? I can remember when I didn't have a patio to cook in. <laughs> now. <laughs> All right, now, Costello, while you're cooking the meal, the caballero strolls into your kitchen. He admires your frijoli. He slyly sprinkles... He slyly sprinkles cheese on your tortillas, and then he pushes your enchiladas on the back of the hot stove. He wouldn't dare. <laughs> he hasn't got the nerve. Oh, just a minute. Just a, what's the matter, Costello? Melon Hub, this time you have gone too far. I didn't mind when that cab driver clicked his gasket. I said nothing when he banged his bazookas together, right in my fiesta. But when you make him push my poor old Auntie Lottie on the back of a hot stove, you have not only imputed my good name, but you have cast a smirch on the good neighbor policy, much as gracious, without a TH, and that's that. Oh, get him out of here. <laughs> Lovely Connie Haynes brings one of the most popular songs of the day. With Will Osborne and the orchestra, Connie sings... Every time, every time, every doggone time I fall in love I get a shoving around every time Every time, every time, every doggone time I try romance I'm taking a chance on losing my mind I'm gonna learn to be a hermit and live in a hermit's cave until I lose those blues my sweetie gave to me. I'm gonna burn my bridges behind me. I'm gonna hate all you men. You can look, but you'll never find me behind the eight ball again. Cause every time, every time, every doggone time I fall in love I got a shoving around every doggone time I'm gonna learn to be a hermit And live in a hermit's cave Until I lose those blues my sweetie gave to me I'm gonna burn my bridge behind me I'm gonna hate all your men You can look, but you'll never find me Behind the eight ball again Every time, every time, every doggone time I fall in love I get a shoving around I get a pushing around Every time, every time, every time I fall in love. Well, Costello, here we are at the studio. Now remember, you're dressed like a Spanish lady, so act like one. And please, straighten up. You're all stooped over. I can't help it. It's a long pull from my garter belt to my socks. <laughs> quiet, quiet. Now, remember, Costello, this is your chance to prove to the director, Mr. Technikolovich, that you're a great actress. Come on. Ah, Mr. Rabbit. And who is this beautiful young lady with you? Uh, Mr. Technikolovich, allow me to introduce the famous South American actress, Luisa Castello. Ah, oh, Senor Technikolovich. Hey, she in the Buenos Aires, La Cienica, Sunset and Vine? Now, <laughs> uh, what's wrong with that, brother? <laughs> the senorita does not speak English. Uh, not a word. Mm, Mr. Rabbit, she is wonderful. She is the most beautiful girl I have seen since I left home. 
No wonder he left home. <laughs> what? Senorita, a moment ago you didn't speak English. I learned fast. Oh, senorita, you are ravishing. This is the first time I ever saw a leading lady... Stop with... looking at me with those eyes, brother. <laughs> but it's still the first time I ever saw a leading lady with muscles. Tonight I will take you to dinner, yes? Yes. Then I take you to the theater, yes? Yes. And after that I take you to my apartment, yes? No. <laughs> but, senorita, I have something to show you. I have etchings. You have etchings? Then scratch yourself, brother. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Come on, Abbott. This guy's got eczema. No, no. <laughs> now, wait a minute, <laughs> senorita. Mr. Technikolovich is a great director. He can make you a star. I will give her the Lubitsch touch. If he lays a finger on me, I'll scream. <laughs> Woo! Um, Lay the finger on me. We will make a scream. Banana! <laughs> Now, we will make a screen test immediately. Hey, Abbott, this is what I've been waiting for. No more comedy for me. Nice, dignified acting. Now, quiet. Now we will take the scene. Senorita, this is a love triangle. You will play the part of the other woman. Why can't the other woman play her own part? Now, be quiet. I mean, I don't want to take some other poor woman's job away. Now, quiet, please. I mean, but after all, I'm... Shut not... up! <laughs> now, the scene opens with you in the arms of your lover. Action. My fiery life and beauty, let me put my arms around your waist. Do you think you can make it? <laughs> ah, you are so gorgeous. You have the kind of hair I love to touch. You have the kind of eyes I love to gaze into. You have the kind of lips I love to kiss. You have the kind of throat that I love to... Cut! Uh, Senorita, you are too cold. Have you never been in love? What do you do when a man tries to kiss you? I belt him in a kisser. <laughs> Will you be quiet? I mean, but I'm only trying to tell you that there's a limit. Shut up! <laughs> now continue the scene. Camera, action. You big, strong man. Let me take you in my arms. Ouch! Ah! Senorita, please don't bend the actors. <laughs> but I was only. Quiet! I mean, I was just. Quiet! I mean, after all. Shut up! <laughs> that is Sylvan Simon, have I ever seen a guy? Now the jealous wife comes in and catches you making love to her husband. Action! Aha! Uh -huh, the women would go down behind my back. You Latin cheater, where's my gun? Oh, wait a minute, Matilda. Put down that gun. The senorita and I love each other until death. Do us part. And I think that's what's going to part us. <laughs> hey, Abbott, please take me back to funny pictures. Oh, you're doing great, Costello. <laughs> You'll never have to do slapstick comedy again. No more rough stuff. No more falling down to get laughs. No more getting pies thrown into your face. All right, quiet. He was only trying to... Shut up, you! Now, continue the scene. Camera. Oh, you fat, double-crossing husband-stealer. I'll break this chair over your head. lemon pie, the pie that I baked for your husband. But you use my eggs, so the pie belongs to me. It's my pie. It is not. It's my pie. It's my pie. Cut, cut. I'll settle this. Yeah. This bickering is disgraceful. <laughs> Senorita Castillo, give me that pie. What did you say? I want that pie. Give me that pie. Okay, but remember, you asked for it. <laughs>
Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with a final word. How did you like your experience as a dramatic star? Abbott, you can have that dramatic stuff. I'll stick to scooking. What's scooking? Nothing much. What's cooking with you? Oh, get him out of here. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night. Good night. Armed Forces Radio Service.